you'd like to get in contact with this show, off the top I will give you one, 877-932-9766. You can also gmail me at the numero 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to see and hear the program, go to, to the YouTube channel, type in the word Talktainment, and then type in the word radio, scroll down to Talktainment number two, and you're there. Why, while you're there, hit the like and subscribe button. We would also, though, like for you to go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage, and all you have to do is click at the top or listen live. And that's all you have to do. And hit the like and subscribe button there. And finally, you can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment to hear the entire show and hear yourself, which a lot of people like to do. You can do that also. Okay. Last week's show was supposed to be about the obstruction of justice, justice being J U S. T, just us, and not justice as the racist white supremacists would have you think about. But we didn't get to that show because of some nationwide issues with the phone service that we had, but that has been corrected, so we are very grateful, you know, for that. Okay, don't forget the donate hour, uh, which is the second hour, don't forget that. And please donate. And while we're on that, uh, when you purchase the book, Mr. Fuller's book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, it is best that you go to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. In about 45 minutes, Mr. Fuller will give you a more detailed explanation of how to get the materials concerning the compensatory concept, but it's just you, it's just better if you go to producejustice.com. That way, it just makes everything okay. All righty, let me introduce to some and present to others Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Mr. Fuller, good morning, and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Good. Um, I'm having a little phone. Can you hear me uh, well, Mr. Fuller? Because I'm hearing some steady. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. Can you hear me clear and loud? No, I cannot hear you clearly and loudly, but we'll work that issue out. I don't, want, I don't know if the usual suspects are at play, but anyway, we will proceed uh, going on here. Okay, all righty. Uh, phone line? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Let's let's do this, Mr. Fuller. Um, we were going to discuss the obstruction of justice. That was a term that was used heavily last week in the uh, hearings concerning uh, Bill Barr and the uh, state, or rather, the Attorney General, the top law official for the U.S. Justice Department. And that word kept coming up. But we know that you have invented a compensatory or made up word for justice, which I, somewhere down the, the show you will get uh, to speak to, but the obstruction of just us, meaning us as black folk, just us. And then I added this, racial population tailoring confusion, which I uh, had a tape where you were uh, speaking about that. When you think about, Mr. Fuller, the obstruction of just us, as being black folk, what does that uh, bring to your mind or thoughts? Well, justice is supposed to cover everybody on the planet, 24-7. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, hopefully everybody else can, too. But I do hear an echo. Okay. Uh, justice applies to everybody, 24-7. Seven. In other words, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if you want to put it in that time frame, all the time. Meaning, people are supposed to be in balance with each other. Yes, sir. And the compensatory definition that I gave it means you have.
have to guarantee, underline the word guarantee, that no person is mistreated at any time in any area of activity. And no person, and the, and the second part is, every person has to get the constructive help mm -hmm. that he or she needs. That has to be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It's never been done in the history of the universe as far as recorded history is concerned. Yes, sir. I've never seen a record where even during the times of building the pyramids or whatever anybody was doing, that nobody was mistreated. That's the key. Not so much just putting up things and going here and going there. We need a world in which everybody can be safe. You can walk out your door and you don't have to worry about anybody doing any harm to you in an aggressive, non-constructive manner. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, wait a minute. person is mistreated at any time, and the person that needs help the most always gets the most constructive help. Okay. Now, that can be done. It should be just routine. It should be taken for granted. It should have been that way from the beginning. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fuller, my producers are telling me they want you to hang up and call back again so we can eliminate the noise on this end. Something is, is going on here. So could you uh, just pardon and just hang up? and call the station back so we can eliminate this noise. Call the station back immediately? Yeah, immediately. So I will we can do that right okay. now. All right. Okay. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to have Mr. Fuller uh, call back because we are having an issue with the noise. Hopefully you can't hear it, but I can certainly hear that. But um, we are speaking with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., speaking about the obstruction of justice, just us, not justice as they would have us, the, they being the white supremacists, would have us uh, think about. And Mr. Fuller was in his definition of what that justice is, about nobody being mistreated, uh, all being in balance. We should be in balance. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> <clears throat> but obviously we're not. So Mr. Fuller has come up with with his term uh, for that uh, uh, what balance uh, means. So what we're doing, we are efforting, Mr. Fuller, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> to call back to us immediately <coughs> so we can proceed with the show. And uh, what we wanted to do also was have him speak to racial population tailoring confusion, which is a term that he had uh, spoke about. And uh, we want to get that uh, together so that we can have a clear idea as to what he is uh, discussing or what he is talking about. I think we're about to get him on the line here again. That is technology for you, but that's okay because we want to make sure that you can hear and that I can hear. Okay, we have him back. Uh, we have him. Okay, Mr. Fuller? Okay, get that right together again. Okay, I'm waiting for the uh, signal so that uh, <clears throat> we can proceed with the show. Okay, in the meantime, this is what we call filler up time. I really don't want to speak right now, but we have to in order to blend this in. Okay, and I'm waiting for the uh, signal. But anyway, that's very important. As you saw or got tired of seeing, that was on TV when they, uh, they being the, the Senate or whatever, whoever they were, were speaking about um, charges against uh, the president or, uh, of obstructing uh, justice according to what the uh, special counsel, Robert Mueller, had had written and suggested in his report that he turned in to the uh, Attorney General, and then a lot of that was redacted and 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 given to the Senate, and then he uh, <coughs> spoke about it, and that term came up of uh, it was obvious that there was some obstructing 
of justice. So I put that as a question for Mr. Fuller to show how or address the fact how we as black people have been obstructed from what justice is. Okay, do we have him now? No, not yet? Okay. Um, have him back. Mr. Fuller? I'm here. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me, that's technology. I hear you loud and clear now without all that thing. Okay, now, you you were speaking about uh, your made-up term of uh, justice. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have a tremendous allergies working today. Uh, the obstruction of justice, but you made up a, a your made up turn. What I did was, Mr. Fuller took that word justice and made it us, just J U S T, and then us. And that is what I want to have you address: how we as black folk have been obstructed, obstruction of just us. Can you address that, please, sir? Well, you can't have racism and justice on the same planet at the same time. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Racism means you guarantee mistreatment of people. That's what that is. Racism is a guarantee that people will be mistreated on the basis of what? On the basis of color. That's all it is. That's all racism is. That's all it ever was. That's all it could be within that context. Mm -hmm. Mistreating people dominating and mistreating people based on the color of the person who is being mistreated. That's what racism is. Racism and justice cannot exist on the same planet at the same time. That's absolutely impossible. That's, that's the science. That's the premise. Now, that statement is either true or false. But it has to be, because justice means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated for any reason. And guaranteeing that the person that he needs help the most gets the most constructive help. And that's all the time, everywhere. You can't have justice, and I think Martin Luther King even said that. You can't have justice in one place and non-justice in another place. That's not justice. So justice is always for all. Somebody has said, I mean, it's written down in, in many a uh, uh, document, justice for all, justice for all. But you don't have to add the for all, because if it's not for all, it's justice. That's the logic. Follow the logic. Okay. You, can't ha you can't have somebody mis being mistreated and then other people treated well mm -hmm. and claim you have justice. That's mm -hmm. impossible. Okay. So we're all, we are all out of balance. Okay, now, <clears throat> how does that apply toward black people, us being obstructed? Well, we're under the system of racism. We're prisoners of war. We are, no peace has ever been declared and, and put into uh, effect. We've had what you call statute law, you know, three types of laws, common, statute, and case uh, in the Northwestern Hemisphere. Statute law means it's written down. Mm -hmm. But in common law, racism is the dominant government of the entire planet. In common law, it's all kind of laws on the book saying you're not, we don't, we don't practice racism here. Racism is outlawed. No, 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 we have it right here on the books, on mm -hmm. page so-and-so and page so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got that all over the world just about now in 2019. But in common law, which is a law, meaning common law means people do it anyway. Like, uh, it's, it's against the law, you might say, to go through a red light. But in common law, people go through red lights, so they speed on modern highways all the time. They go over the speed limit all day long, every day. That's common law, mm -hmm. meaning you keep doing it anyway, regardless of what's on the books. And so racism is, you know, against it is on the books. <clears throat> but common law is still being practiced. So you just simply can't have justice as long as you have it in common law. Yes, sir. And what we call 
slavery, slavery never stopped. Because what is slavery? Slavery is nothing but mistreatment of a person. If you're being mistreated for five minutes, you were a slave for those five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's all slavery is. It's, it's mistreatment by a name. It's different types of mistreatment, all kinds of mistreatment. Yes, sir. And slavery is just another form of mistreatment. That's all it is. You, can, you don't even have to use the word slavery. You can just say the person is being mistreated. The person is being mistreated. You're not treating the person correctly. You're abusing the person. You're doing something against the person that shouldn't be done. That is slavery. Okay. And any time you're subject to a person who is doing that, that person has you as a slave. For the, if you're being robbed on the street at gunpoint, you are a slave to that robber during the time of the robbery. And you're still enslaved to that person if you your rent is due and the person that robbed you on the street took your rent. But the master slaves on the planet, for non-white people, in answer to your question, the master slave masters are the white supremacists. Every white person that practices racism any time in any form is a part of the slave system of mistreatment. So the slaves, meaning black people, period, wherever they are, were never so-called emancipated. Yes, sir. They were resettled, scattered, etc. But they were still under the system of white supremacy. So every person who is classified as black is still a victim of non-justice and a slave wherever he or she happens to be on the planet. Why? Because white supremacy is a slave system. And as long as it exists, because it's a, a system of mistreatment of people based on color, you still have slavery. So this thing, we can start just saying it, and everybody should start saying it, not just on this program. The slaves were never freed, because if you have racism, you have slavery. Yes, it's sir. the same thing. It's oh. exactly the same thing. Okay. TalkTainmentRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics, uh, such as news and lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and uh, politics. Now, here's three that I'm going to share with you. Uh, the Wellness Spot with Tanya Karen, Wiggins World with uh, Stacy Wiggins, and uh, the Quay Morgan Hill Show with Quay Morgan. Now, all these shows are exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com. That means you can't get them anywhere but here. And if you would like, all you have to do is go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage and click on programs for a list of all the shows that TalkTainment Radio has and give it what we call a sample. You, know, you don't have to listen to the whole or the entire program, but give a sample or uh, listen to it so that you can kind of get an idea of what the show is like. That and much more from TalkTainmentRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And today, we are attempting to, or have Mr. Fuller address the obstruction of justice. Uh, you can call in at 877-932-9766, or you can gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com, and we will try to get you on. Uh, Mr. Fuller, I was looking at a uh, tape that someone had put up uh, concerning, uh, you were making a statement called racial population tailoring confusion. Uh, do you remember that? And if you do, what is that? Well, that's in the textbook for victims of white supremacy, uh, the 2016 edition. Racial population tailoring just means a lot of people, uh, of course, they give their opinion, but this is mine. A lot of people say that the white supremacists are planning on exterminating all of the black people on the planet. And I have taken the position, going back years, I looked at that and I said, oh, if the white supremacists wanted to 
completely eradicate black people and non-white people from the planet, we would have been gone a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's not their plan, in my opinion. And uh, I've said that for years, and I put it in the book and whatnot. But one thing, look at the logic. Uh, and this is how I came to that conclusion. Uh, they, they had the muscle to do that because there's nobody to stop them. Nobody cares about us that much. Nobody cares if the white supremacist said, we're going to kill all black people. This is 2019. Mm -hmm. They are nothing but a nuisance. They're just in the way. Look at them. All walking up and down the street, taking up space, taking up housing, uh, whining about this, whining about that. Let's just kill them all. Let's meaning every white person that sees a black person, kill him. <coughs> kill him. Kill her. Kill all the babies. Just get rid of them. And we don't have to be bothered with all this demonstrating in the street and talking about welfare and talking about better schools and housing. Just eradicate them from the place, face of earth. And naturally, some white people would even say, well, how are we going to do that? I mean, you know, somebody might get mad about that. Then you come down to the question, let's just use logic now. Who would be mad about that enough to put a stop to it? When black people slaughter each other, black people are mad at each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't even want to be around each other, can't be around each other under the system of white supremacy because we've been trained to be against each other. So there's no black people who have the muscle to stop the white supremacists from killing us. So what people would stop them? The only thing that would stop the white supremacists from killing black people, even if they announced it on every radio that starting July the 1st, they're going to have a killing spree like you would have never seen worldwide. Kill every black person in sight, on sight. And every white person that's eligible to do so or anybody else who wants to join in. Nope, nothing could stop that other than our creator. All right? So getting back to your central question, racial depopulation, they're not planning on that. And it's logical that they wouldn't, because they could have done that many years ago, okay. <laughs> not here in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah. so why are we still here? Because they want us here. Want us here for what? Yeah, for what? In order to practice white supremacy. Okay. That is the supreme value. Now, let's stop and think about that. That's very important. What is it that when a white person wakes up in the morning and stretches and yawns and says, okay, what do I do today? I go to work. I do this. I do that. I get my children ready for school and mm -hmm. all like that. Mm -hmm. Ready for school, ready for work, in order to do what? In order to be successful. See, I'm just talking about the each individual white person on the planet as we speak right now. Okay? Success. Everybody wants success. All right? Success at doing what? What is success? Well, in a world dominated by racism, where that is the supreme value. See what I mean? There's no value on this planet among the people that is more supreme, because supreme means supreme. Yes, sir than the system of white supremacy. I mean, that's, the, that, that, that's what you live for, to look out your window and see dark-skinned people. I mean, just, you know, in a, a, a crazy state. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know what to do under your thumb. That's power. That's a value. Mm -hmm. That's something to hold on to when you have been taught this all your life, directly, indirectly, that black is evil. Anything that's dark, a dark day, a dark mood. Has anybody ever photographed a mood? I mean, <laughs> how can you say that a mood is dark? All right? Even black people use the term dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a derogatory <laughs> manner. If it's dark, I mean, there's something to be shunned, something to be despised. So you got a ready-made target when you're stretching and yawning, if you're a white person. I mean, to say, 
hey, I got somebody I can abuse, all right? I mean, and, and that makes me feel what? Makes me feel powerful, that's what. Something that I can push around, not just the animals and the birds and bees and all that type of thing, but I got creatures that kind of look like people, but I don't have to treat them like people. I don't have to treat them certainly on an equal level to myself. So I say they're subhuman. And that does what for me? It makes me feel good. I got somebody to look down on. Why? Why do I need somebody to look down on? Because that's what's been taught to me. That's what's been taught. Gotta have somebody to look down on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Otherwise, how are you going to make a movie? How are you going to do anything that's of value? Hmm. I mean, why do you go fishing? You look down on the fish. You you do what with a fish? You you go fishing. Now you're not hungry for fish, but for sport, you do what? You take some expensive fishing equipment and leave your comfortable surroundings, your house, and you go out and throw a fish line in the water with a what? A hook on the end of that line. And the fish, who is just trying to survive, sees that hook, and it's called a lure, and the fish is lured toward it, and you watch that fish and say, oh, he's coming up there. Mm. Oh, he's coming now. Ah, yeah. Oh, now I got him. (laughs) And you reel him in. Okay. And throw him in the bucket. Throw him in the bucket. And sometimes, before the day is over, what do a lot of what you call professional fishers do? They look at that fish in that bucket, take the fish out of the bucket, throw it back into the water, and then next week come back and snatch it out of the water again on a hook. <laughs> All right. the fish miserable. Let's do now, this. Now, just that illustration alone, I hope, population tailoring, they get rid of so many fish. They get rid of so many black people. And then they say, that's enough. Because we want to go fishing again. Okay. That's why. On page 27 in the revised expanded edition. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's uh, one of the six basic uh, racial strategies for racist confusion. And uh, six strategies, and that's one of them. That's number three. Yes, sir. Racial population tailoring confusion. See, the emphasis is not on the reducing population. The emphasis is on causing more confusion among non-white people. That's, that's, you know, because if they just wanted to, like I said before, eliminate black people from the planet, we would have been gone a long time ago. Yes, sir. Because no black person, nobody, and not enough white people have the muscle to stop white people who make this decision. The white supremacists are the most powerful people on the planet. So if they just want to kill black people... All of us, nothing is going to stop them short of the Creator, whatever you call the Creator, God, Allah, the Great Spirit, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Because no black person for sure has that kind of muscle Mm -hmm. to stop white supremacists from having mass slaughter. There's no group of, of, of black people anywhere on this planet that could stop that. That'd just be a steamroller. Yes, sir. And in a few months, we'd just be dis- we'd be extinct. Period. Yes, sir. No oh. black people on the planet at all. Okay. Now, for those who do not have the revised, expanded edition of the book, in which, in a few moments, Mister Fuller will give you all the details on how to get the book. Mister Fuller, on page twenty-seven, uh, just for the for for clarity's sake. Can you be uh, start to read uh, where it says racial population tailoring so that confusion so that none of us are confused? Right. Okay. okay. This means, uh, and, and this is strictly my opinion, like everything in the books. This means that the white supremacists may kill large numbers of non-white people, which they do, either directly or indirectly, in selected areas on a massive scale, which they do. They will kill them by drying out of 
poison or poisoning the water supply. Mm -hmm. That's one way. Mm -hmm. See, they don't just have to come around what you call police brutality and that type of thing. You just dry up the water where a lot of black people are. They know how to do that. They can build a dam 300 miles up the river, and here you are with your tribe, for example, and you've been getting water here in this river for thousands of years, all passed down from generation to generation, pure, clean water, running water. But little by little, the water dries up, and you can't figure it out. Why is the, the water, this water has been coming down, you know, out of the mountains for thousands of years. The white supremacists built a dam 1,000 miles away. See, they are the most skilled people on the planet. They know how to do stuff like that. You don't even know they're up there. But they cut the water off. Little by little, you got less and less water. Then you begin to what without water? Your crops die. Mm -hmm. Then you die. That's how they control populations. Uh, I just want, that's not right here in the book, but I just want to say that much. No, I continue, All right. please. Or mm -hmm. they can poison the water that you have. You yes, don't sir. even know the water's poison. Mm -hmm. They got all kinds of poison. Dumping poisonous waste, etc. It says here on page 27. Yes, sir. They tailor the population for the purpose of maintaining better control over all the remaining non-white people. And they have many ways of doing this. Continue. The white supremacists sometimes kill large numbers of non-white people on an ongoing, well-thought-out basis. They do not intend to kill all of the non-white people of the known universe. They intend to tailor the number of non-white people by killing a calculated number in different places, in different times, according to whatever will best fit any long-term or short-term plans that the white supremacists, racist man and racist woman, have in mind for better control and future domination and mistreatment of non-white people. Okay, the last part. Last part is part of the white supremacist plan of killing selected populations of non-white people is to, from time to time, produce situations among non-white people that will guarantee that they will, out of anger, frustration, jealousy, want, and or confusion, kill each other. Mm. See, they know how to do that. Yes, sir. Which they do. Everywhere you find black people in the northwestern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere uh, of, of what they call so-called South America, right there in Brazil, look at where black people are mm -hmm. in Brazil, and look at the killing rate among black people themselves. Mm. That's orchestrated. Orchestrated, yeah. Yes. The white supremacists set that up and then provide all the guns and whatnot, and so they're running around in those hillsides overlooking Rio, the city of God, <laughs> all right, slaughtering each other on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And the white supremacists set that up. Yes, sir. That's population tailoring. Finish that up, please, Mr. Fuller, all of this, where it says all of this racial population tailoring. Hello. Yeah, go, yeah, I, yeah. I ask you to go ahead and finish this up where it says all of this racial population tailoring. All of this racial population tailoring is designed to have the effect of guaranteeing that the non-white people of the known universe, in their greatest numbers, will not be of any major constructive value to any people except racist man. And racist woman. Wow. There That's you, the white supremacy. Now there, in other words, whatever we do is supposed to make them stronger. Yes, sir. That's a part of the rock population tailoring strategy. Now, <laughs> yeah, now, now, this is on page 27 of the uh, revised, uh, expanded edition of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. 
27 and 28. Yeah, 27 and 28. He just, Mr. Fuller just read this out of the book, which is one of the reasons why it is imperative that you get the book. And at this particular time, Mr. Fuller, since we are there, uh, and since it is uh, the quarter of the hour, I mean, uh, 45 minutes after the hour, we need you to talk about this book. Go ahead. Well, you can simply, you can get the books by simply going to produce, P-R-O-D-U-C-E, produce justice, producejustice.com. That's it. Producejustice.com. Producejustice.com. And what will come up on the screen is a brief description of what the textbook is about. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's a long title, but don't let that throw you. I mean, just, you know, if you want the book, uh, that long title doesn't mean anything until you actually read the first part of the book, which the title of the book is explained. Yes. It's called the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. Now, with a title like that, I mean, the average person wouldn't want to even bother with a title like that. I know I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. All right. But there is a equal title. I call them equal. I, I used to call it supplementary, but it's an equal title. The Compensatory Counter-Racist Code. All right? That's a little closer. And then a third that's down near the bottom of the uh, cover. A textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy, and uh, white supremacy in parenthesis. And that's all explained inside the book, too, because racism is white supremacy. There's no other form of racism other than white supremacy. That's the only show in town. Actually, is the most powerful government on the planet. Well, you say each individual is a government, which is true, but the most powerful government on the planet Earth in 2019 is the government of white supremacy. You call it in capital letters the system of white supremacy. And it's the most powerful political force and stronger than all of the religions put together. So it's a religion. It's the supreme religion. There's no religion more powerful than the religion of white supremacy. That's the title of it. Not Christianity, not Islam, not Judaism, not Confucianism, not Hinduism, not any of the other uh, major religions and the tribal religions. All of them, uh, there's many, many hundreds and hundreds of religions of tribal religions all over the, you know, in every little village and whatnot. People have their own religion is just a strong belief backed up by action. So let's get that straight. What is a religion? A strong belief backed up by action that usually has, in many religions, a, uh, in the imagination of the people or in the programs of the people, a supreme being. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes people say that, well, the, it's, it's a combination of things. I mean, you've got spirits in the water, spirits in the air. All of these different spirits are gods themselves and all like that. That's people's religions. But the supreme religion on the planet Earth in 2019 are those white people who believe in mistreating people based on color and that they have a system or religion called the system of white supremacy. Nothing matches that in power. And everybody of color bows down to it if they tell the truth. Now, that statement I just made is either true or false. So just ask yourselves that question. Is that true? Is the religion of white supremacy stronger than Christianity? Is it? It either is or it isn't. Do people who say that they are Christians and they are people of color, when the white supremacists come around, do they stick 
with their Christianity or their brand of Christianity because there's different facets of it. When the white supremacists say, I'm here now, you will no longer do this. Why? Because I said so. That's why. Do those people stick with what they have been taught all their lives? That nobody takes their place? Nobody stops them from practicing what they are practicing? And so far, the evidence shows the white supremacists say, I don't care what God you pray to. When I come around, if you're a person of color, you better do what I say do, or you're going to find out what God really is, because I'm your God on this earth. Now, you might have one after you die that will tell you what to do, but you're going to do what I say do as long as you're on my planet, because I run this show. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that runs this show. In God we trust, and I'm your God if you are a person with black skin, mm -hmm. period. And they, so far, hey, they've had no takers on that. There are a lot of people who have challenged them, and then very unfortunate things have happened to them so far. That's the truth. Okay. So ProduceJustice.com is where you can get uh, this book. Okay. Let's go to the Gmails. Okay, Mr. Fuller, it says here, um, this comes from Frames. It says this, uh, Mr. Fuller, since the correct thing according to you is, is for murders, murderers to kill themselves and abortion is murder, is that what you suggest women do who have undergone that procedure? In other words, should women who have abortions kill themselves afterwards in your reasoning, since you say it's murder? Well, no, I hadn't even thought of that at the time that I wrote it. But that's something to consider. Now, so the white supremacists say that to black people, abortions are fine. They're all right in some areas of the world. In other areas, they say, no, 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 not until I tell you. Because they still run things. They run everything. We are in a prison. So I look at it within that context. And so prisoners of war, they just have to make that selection themselves. And uh, a woman can do that, now that I think about it. If she wants to, she say, well, if you make me kill my baby, I might as well be dead myself. So when I kill my baby, I'm going to because that's murder. That's against my religion or against my principles. But that's why the textbook says United Independent. That's a decision for her to make. But I hadn't considered that at the time that I wrote the textbook, because, you know, the textbook doesn't cover everything. So that's a decision that a black female has to make on her own, that when she kills her baby, she says, well, I'm going to, because that's against my principles, all right, if you allow me. Now, the white supremacists might say, no, we're going, we'll, we'll abort the baby, all right, but uh, we're not going to abort you. And if you try to abort yourself, we're going to try to prevent it, okay, because suicide is supposed to be illegal, okay, under the white supremacists. You, you can't kill yourself without their permission like everything else we do in the system of white supremacy, all right? So then that's a tug of, that's just a part of the tug of war. Mm -hmm. Right there in the hospital, the woman's baby has been aborted. Now she's grabbing the knife off the table, trying to slit her own throat, okay? And uh, nurses and everybody's grabbing her, trying to stop her. You said this might come to that type of scene. But here again, the United Independent System says everything, and the textbook says it. See, the textbook is not dictatorial. That's another thing I want everybody all throughout the world to understand. Neely Fuller's textbook, textbook is just a book of suggestions. You don't have to pay any attention to it at all if it doesn't apply to you, if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't do what you want it to do in your best interest 
in a constructive manner. That's how it's written. If, you know, if, if you're reading it from back to front, if you find nothing in it, like the first first one of the first people who looked at the book, the original copy back in 1984, he said, "Fuller, well, I looked at your book. I don't find nothing in there. You ain't got a that book is nothing. It ain't nothing in that book that I can use." I said, "Nothing." Nothing's in the book that you can use? He said, absolutely nothing. And you have written a book that don't mean nothing to me. I said, well, that's exactly what the book, how the book is written. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't find anything in it that you can use that will work in your best interest in a constructive manner, then that means that you don't have, because it's written for people that got a race problem and all the problems that come with that, but if you don't see that, where that helps you to solve any of your problems, because apparently you don't have any, then the book doesn't even apply to you. So the book actually works for you okay. in, that, in that manner. Okay. You discover that you don't, you don't have any problems. Okay. Now, right. well, to answer that uh, abortion uh, question, um, yes, uh, is the uh, if, if, if a woman decides to off herself according to what she thinks you have written, would that be considered maximum emergency compensatory action? No. Maximum emergency compensatory action is action taken in the killing of a suspected white supremacist. Okay. So that would just be the lady that's killing herself, that's all. Okay. That's just suicide, that's but, all. But, but, but they killed all the right. baby. But you believe yeah, and, and that was murder on the part of the baby. So suicide is self-murder, you might say. All right? Depending on how, or what word you want to attach to it, because it's you who's doing it. It's you who is doing it. Yes. See, the white supremacists call some things uh, accidental. That's really murder. Okay? Depends on who's doing it and what they call it. See, these are just words for killing. Okay. That's all it is, killing. Kill it. Mm. Kill this. Kill that. And right. see, the, the system of white supremacy is set up where you actually worship killing. Okay. Look at the so-called blockbuster movies. We have to leave it there right at this particular hour. Uh, talk to him at Radio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. Uh, this is the end of the first hour. Stay tuned for the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Nilly Fuller. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio, TalkTainmentRadio.com. Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. Talktainmentradio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of Talktainmentradio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. Live call in talk show. Dial 1 877 932 9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTimmyRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTimmyRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now. Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Welcome to the second hour of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bob, and you're listening to it on TalkTeamAtRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. Our topic today for Wednesday 
May the 8th, 2019, is the obstruction of justice. J-U-S-T. U-S. Just us. And we slash it with racial population tailoring confusion, which if you have your copy of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept Revised Edition on page 27, uh, Mr. Fuller has written his suggestion on that, and it is worthy of you to give it a, a look-see to try and understand how things are tailored for you to do something. One of the things that was mentioned was about water and the poisoning of it, and then what came to my mind was Flint, Michigan. This was done on purpose. Or uh, out on that Indian reservation, I think it was in North Dakota, what they did uh, to the water, they being the uh, uh, white supremacists, what they did with that water. But all these things are done. Or the killing of black folks. Uh, we have a gentleman that calls in periodically. We call him uh, the extermination man. Haven't heard from him for a long time. But all that killing that has been going on in Chicago and actually all of it, black folk killing black folk. If you read the, on page 27, uh, it will explain racial population tailoring confusion. Mr. Fuller has written about that in you can agree or not agree. You can see whether it's true or not true. But you have to uh, understand that. And the best way, one of the best ways to understand it is for you to get a copy of his book, which he will explain again um, later on in this program, about how you can get the book and understand it and read it by going to ProduceJustice.com. Okay, one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number that you can call to get in contact with the show. But let's go to the Gmails. Um, this comes, well, I, I'm not even going to try to produce uh, the name. But anyway, from the pro JJ from the projects, says this, Mr. Fuller, can you please uh, give your opinion on the action and word forgive? Is forgiveness a codified re response to wrongdoing. It's up to the individual, according to the code. So that's why it's called a united independent. But that independent means individual. You are an individual person. You make your own decisions as best you possibly can in everything, in all nine areas of activity, as best you possibly can under a illegitimate system. That's, you make your own decisions as best you possibly can in economics, in education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. To the extent that the white supremacist gives you a little leeway, quote unquote, to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that as long as you don't dissatisfy them to the extent that they will do greater harm to you because you're already a prisoner of war. Look at yourself as a prisoner of war. You've never been released. You've never been let go. We're still slaves, if you're a person of color, on planet Earth to the system of white supremacy. So you can make these decisions on your own if they allow you to. Mm -hmm. Some decisions they allow us to make. So you make these decisions. If you want to forgive a person, you can. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. I mean, a, a, other than the white supremacist or somebody that the white supremacist allows to stop you and whatnot. So you can forgive if you wish to, but uh, it depends on, but you should, like in all words that you use, what do you mean by forgiveness? By doing what? Because everything and this is real important for the entire code. Everything is not just about saying. That's one part. That's a very important part. What you say is very important. But what you do is everything. What you do, not how you feel, but what you actually wind up doing. 
That is what matters more than anything else. That is the central thing in counter-racist codification. What do you wind up doing? And what is the effect of what you're doing? Now, everything that people are supposed to be doing on the planet is supposed to have one effect, just one, constructive. Something that is absolutely constructive. Now, forgiveness has a constructive effect, meaning things get better, not worse, because of it, then go with it. That would be, that's, that's the basic response. What's going to happen after you do what you do? So one thing you might do is forgive somebody. Now, is that going to make things better? Keep things the same, which means worse, or just worse. But even if they're the same, that's worse. Hmm. All right? So every move that everybody makes on this planet from the time they come on this planet, at the time you take the first breath as a baby, every move that you make is supposed to be an improvement over what already is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Otherwise, that is wasted what? Breath. Breath. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, caller number, line number one, uh, you are on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Uh, good morning, Mr. Fuller, and good morning, Mr. Bonnie. I just wanted to respond to something you said when you mentioned about the, uh, you know, black people and each other and, and, and this part of the population family. And I have Okay, wait a minute. Uh, can, can you hear her, Mr. Fuller? No, I can hear her voice, but I cannot hear anything that she's saying. Okay, ma'am, uh, could you kind of speak closer to the phone? Because we, we both are having problems hearing your, your good question, and it was it seemed like it was a good question. So could you repeat okay, that? So okay, so mine you. is a comment. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I thank you. I can hear you now. Oh, okay, great. So my comment is, is that, I, there was a little clip that I saw, and there was a little young, little young black boy, and he had a hoodie on. And I'm saying this in relation to what you're saying about population tailoring. And on the little footage, the little boy, he, nobody put a microphone in his mouth. He was just saying, I saw some white hands shooting at those black men hanging out or hanging on the corner. And so I'm saying that in terms of population tailoring, that in 2019, this is the KKK possibly shooting these black men on the corner. And what the confusion of it is, is that if you can mix in with a black person shooting a black person, and then some white hands sticking out of a car, throwing in their piece on it, now we can't see what the real truth is. Because maybe the black person might have killed one person, but maybe the person in the car did the rest of the, you know, created the carnage there. So I agree with you, and I'm saying that some of this is like a person throwing a stone and the third person throwing a stone at person A. B thinks that A threw it. B doesn't know that C, the third person, threw it. Now A and B are fighting, thinking that each other are the problem. Similar to the way we see things sometimes in the so-called Middle East, you know, uh, the hidden hand that's always operating and doing these things and keeping people fighting and creating what Mr. Fuller and I thank you so much for it, creating confusion. Mm. So I'll just listen and maybe I can make another comment after your response. Okay, Mr. Fuller? Well, um, I, I didn't hear a question, but the white supremacists, if I understand uh, the general question, the white supremacists have all kinds of ways to cause confusion. Why? Confusion is a very important thing to have. Or the ability 
ability to make confusion is a very important power to have if you're trying to confuse people in order for those people to do something that you want done. That's the whole point, for deliberately confusing somebody mm -hmm. to get something mm -hmm. done that you want done regardless of what they want done. Mm -hmm. So you confuse them because anybody that you can confuse, you can dominate. The white supremacists understand that principle. And I've often talked about it here on the, uh, on the air, and I've given them an idea, uh, an example, rebel. Ten people in a room. Now, one of those people went around before the meeting started and took down all the exit signs and then started the meeting. But that same person also rang the fire bell during the meeting, had it set, had the fire bell set to go off in the middle of the meeting. And everybody starts looking for the exit, but nobody knows where the exit is. Somebody thinks maybe that they smell smoke. Now people are beginning to panic. Now these are 10 people in the room, but one person knows where the fire exit is because that person, before the meeting started, went around and took down all the fire exit signs. So that person says, calm down, folks. Don't panic. Calm down. Stop acting like children. Follow me. And everybody will, because that person is calm. That's the only person in the room that is calm. Mm -hmm. So that person guides everybody to the exit, because that is the only person that knows what where the exits are. Everybody else running up and down the halls, running into walls and whatnot, I mean, uh, pulling at doors, yelling and screaming and whatnot, I got to get out of here. But this person is very calm. Calm down. Calm down, children. Calm down. We know, I mean, you know, I mean, I know that you all don't know what you're doing. But Big Daddy's here. Big Mama's here. Calm down. Follow me, I will get you out of here safely and in an orderly manner. Now that's the white supremacists all over the world. Mm -hmm. They know where the exit signs were, they know where this is, they know where that is. They study the entire environment, yes. unlike other people on the planet, yes. the non-white people. So they know what people can do, they know what people are going to do before they do it. Okay. Because they plan it ahead. That's the power of the white supremacist mind okay. and body. Okay. Remember that. Ma'am, did you say you had a follow-up? Well, no, I didn't have a follow-up. I just wanted to, um, you know, listen to what Mr. Fuller had okay. to say and perhaps make a comment if I heard something that he said that really, you know, stood out. But yeah. I will just like to, 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 oh. to, to capitalize that it may not be all of the black on black that we think. Okay. That's what that's what I want to say. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, all right. Thanks. All right. Thank thank you for your call. Oh, let's see here. Talk time at radio dot com is a twenty four seven no charge worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on uh, various topics such as uh, news and lifestyle, uh, uh, sports, law, health, wellness religion and politics now here's a couple or three that i'm going to share with you one is called new money with drew and janae um the other one is stairway to heaven with uh claude and uh let's do this one my show my other show talking sports plus with mr bobby now all these shows are exclusive to talk team at radio.com and all you have to do is go to the talk team at radio.com home page and click on program and sample each program that may be of interest to you to see if you like it or don't like it. That's the only way you're going to find out. And if you do, then, you know, like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. But just go to the TalkTeamAtRadio.com homepage, click on programs, and you're there. All this from TalkTeamAtRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby, and... Well, I lost my point here. I am the co-host of the, uh, thank you, of the uh, 
compensatory con on the compensatory concept with Mr. Uh, Neely Fuller Jr. Today we are uh, discussing the obstruction of justice, meaning just J U S T, just us as black folks. But our subtopic would be, uh, and it has taken off, racial population tailoring confusion. And it is in the book, which Mr. Fuller will talk about in about 25, 30 minutes, a book that you, sh you really should get, not because I say so and, or suggest, but if you really want to understand what's really going on, as Mr. Fuller has stated uh, in his opening statement in every program about if you do not understand racism, what it is and how it works. Yeah, racism, which is white, white supremacy, what it is and how it works. You will operate in a state of confusion. You may think that this is just a blanket statement, but if you really take the time to examine that and hear what Mr. Fuller is, is suggesting and speaking about, understanding will come. Okay, let's do this. Um, one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number you can call, or you can Gmail me at the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby B O B B Y, at Gmail dot com. Uh, this comes from uh, Mr. Stovall. He says, "This, Mr. Bobby, can you ask Mr. Fuller whether he really believes that American citizens, particularly Black American males, are living longer, are living longer lives?" In New York City, I don't perceive that to be true. Doesn't the world government of white supremacy have to limit the life expectancy of non-whites even at the expense of their own? Also, at the end of the April 27th show, Mr. Fuller had predicted how the armed forces of the United States would encourage the recruitment of black lesbians. Can he elaborate further? Thank you. Well, in answer to the first question about population control uh, and, and given about whether or not black people, he said in New York City? Uh, yes, that's what he said, New York City. In oh, particular. I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to that. And whatever statistics the white supremacists say, the white supremacists tell us how many black people there are on the planet. Okay? And all I say to that is, well, that's what they said, because I don't know. I have no way of finding out. I only can go by what they say. And if they say that there are only, you know, so many black people in Africa at any given time, and, uh, you know, they, they keep the figures on all of that. That's what I mean by white supremacy. I just have to go by what they say. And you always listen to what they say. But you always listen to what they say, but you have your own doubts and you have your own beliefs. That's the United Independent Way. You figure out whether or not they're telling the truth as best you can, because there's no non-white person that can tell you. Mm -hmm. That's what white supremacy means. No non-white person can say, oh, uh, it's a... Uh, I, I know the exact figures of how many black people are in New York City at any given time. All right. Well, now, what's the question? The question is, okay, you're black. How did you find that out? And from whom? Did you go around and count mm -hmm. the number of black people that are actually on a train right now and just crossed the line into New York City? Mm -hmm. You know, and how many black people went on vacation, took off in an airplane at this exact moment? And how, you know, this is something from almost from minute to minute. What is the population? Black people, people classified as black, and that, that's a whole other thing itself. Yes. Who are you classifying as black in New York City at any given moment? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people say, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm not black. And other people say, well, Puerto Rican is black, all right, <laughs> or brown. And brown is black, so even when it comes to classifications of people. Excuse me, please, yeah. caller, please turn your radio down. Hello. Caller, please turn your radio down. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Because even when it comes to classifications of people, 
That's a part of the confusion. Racial classification. This is in the textbook, too. Yes. It got us all confused about who's black and who's not. <laughs> yes. All right? We say black and brown. Most black people on the planet are brown. <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> all right, from what I see walking up and down the street, black people come in all shades. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, right on up to what we call or something called, you know, that you can't even describe called red bone. <laughs> That's a slang term. Yes, it is. We know some red bones. We got them in our family. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. Hey, but they're black. Okay. I mean, that's a black dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, but uh, we we say, uh, yeah, but he's red bone, but he's black. Okay. <laughs> Adam Clayton Powell. Is, yeah. You know, he, <laughs> yeah, he's red bone. <laughs> he's red <laughs> right. Bone. Okay. Uh, how about the second part of that question? It said Mr. Fuller had predicted how the armed forces of the United States would encourage the recruitment of black lesbians. Can he elaborate further? Thank you. I, I never, I never said in the United States. I don't use those terms. So, I, mean, I don't even know what is meant by United States. Okay. All right. But I will say within this context, lesbianism, meaning so-called same-sex marriage, and all of that, uh, the code book calls it counter-sexualism or anti-sex. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's another discussion all within itself. But uh. I think that's the plan of the white supremacists. This is my opinion, that what they're going to do, what they are in the process of doing now, they know that in the future it's going to be a lot of what you call military conflicts going on everywhere. I mean, where you're going to need soldiers. So a lot of what we call the standard white person, the white male, yeah. the strong white male, uh, what what you call the best of, the best, what the white supremacists call the best of the best of white people, I mean, who are in what we call military situations, the best soldiers among white people, they predict, according to what I think, in the system of white supremacy, that they're not going to have enough of them to cover all of these little battles going on. Of course, they're just battles. Battles are part of a war. So we're already in a war, always have been. So where there are non-white people and the white supremacists are sending white people off to die, you know, and sometimes in large numbers. And all of these battles that are going to be coming up everywhere, all the time, one little battle here, one big battle there, another small battle going over yonder, and then one real close. I mean, that's a big battle again, because you just had one three weeks ago, now it's flaring up again. you got to rush somebody there, okay, in the system of white supremacy, so you have a lot of white people running all over the place trying to put out these fires in the system of white supremacy. So... Hey, enough already. At a certain point, you've got to make a long-range plan, because this is going to be the pattern. So here is a part of the plan, getting to the answer to the question. I think have a lot of very frustrated black females who are frustrated with everything, including black males, sick of them, because we are completely dysfunctional, not qualified to be husbands ever in the system of white supremacy, or anything of any constructive value. So they turn to each other. Say, okay, I'll pretend that I'm the husband. You pretend that you're the wife. And since the white supremacists say that this is a great thing for us, I mean, let's do it. Let's go all the way. Let's form huge organizations where we just nurture each other. We can do that because we have the best jobs and all like that. And among black people, the black female in the future is more qualified because we're not filling up the jails as fast as the black males are and all like that. We kind of stick to business, try to do something that makes Mm -hmm. sense sometimes, Mm -hmm. all right? But we just don't have a male. I got all these college degrees and whatnot, and I'm looking around for somebody to share all this with me, and I'm just sitting around a whole bunch of 
females just like me, and this is going to be the wave of the future because the white supremacists got it set up that way. All right? Black males are filling up the jails, sodomizing each other, and black females are out here just trying to raise the babies on their own. You never see a black female. She's got seven of them. There ain't no male nowhere around, okay? That's going to continue because the white supremacists want it that way. All right? They got it set up that way. So even the black males that want to do something can't. See, that's going wow. to, that ain't going to happen. Yes, sir. Not under the system of white supremacy. So the black females are going to be paired off with each other. All right, you got a tailor-made situation. All right, girls, gals, come over here, both of you. Or maybe, you know, in the future, three or four. Since, you know, y'all are not going to be producing no babies, so... Four of you can marry each other. Mm. All right? This this just might be coming. I don't know for sure. But the white supremacists have a diabolical mind. They're orchestrating all of this. I mean, not some of it. They are behind all of this stuff, okay, where black people are concerned. But we don't know it. But we will in the future, but it'll be too late. I mean, you know, hopefully not. Okay. So you say, oh, okay, all four of you, y'all married to each other. All right, okay, you love laying around in the bed with each other because you ain't got no real man, I mean, to do it with. So you, you got all these sex toys and all like that. So you got that down pat. All right, come over here. Now, I'm going to make it comfortable for you big time. I'm going to give you all big bonuses to come into my army. And I'm going, and you don't have to worry about going on leave and all like that. I'll save a lot of money. See, this is another thing, a big money angle here. Look at all the oceans of money that they will save. Because these soldiers, males and females, when they're separated, they like to get together. And when they can, it costs money and it takes time. They want to go on what they call furloughs. So you say, hey, you're always on furlough. Because we'll make it real easy for you to lay around with each other in the barracks and all like that. So you always got your mate right with you. So we'll send you off to these wars, get you combat ready. Because you're doing the male's role anyhow, raising offspring and all like that. So you might as well just act like men and be men. Wow. Okay? All of you, hmm. all of you black females are going to be turned into males. If, oh. if we can do it that way, okay. I mean, and send okay. you off to fight on these battlefronts and die in each other's arms. Okay. We are tired of doing it ourselves. God, let's go to the phone lines. Okay, caller, you've waited patiently. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hey, Mr. Fuller. Um, i just like to say I believe you are 100% correct about the, uh, with the diagnosis of the system of racism white supremacy. Uh, I believe it's a hard pill to swallow for most black folk to have the mirror held up in front of us and see how pitiful we really are. Uh, but like I said, I just believe you are 100% correct. And if we really pay attention and look closely, we will see that. But uh, on another uh, a question, I heard you say that the black Males are filling up the prison. What's your thoughts on the black males filling up the prison? And on the other side, you have the black woman filling up the, the black churches. I believe they make up about 86% of the church population. Um, why, why is that? Answer that, please. I'll take my answer off to you. Okay, thank you, caller. Mr. Fuller? Well, because black males don't like to be institutional. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. I, I hear buzzing. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Yeah, black males are being picked up and put in prison. That's the answer. <laughs> Otherwise, they would be out in the street. They don't go to church much anyway, except when the black females take them there. And... uh the black males, a lot of the black males that go, they go there to think about maybe being preachers themselves or being in some type of show business in the church. Whoa. All right? And uh, in other words, <laughs> I, there are many, a musician will tell you, 
I got my start playing the piano and the organ in the church. Yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's like a little apprenticeship, you might say, for going. But it's mostly the black females who are nurturing. See, you got to think of all females as being basically nurturous. So uh, the the church kind of talks about either directly or indirectly, if you're talking about the Christian church, nurturing. It's about nurturing, either directly or indirectly, being nurtured, starting off with the story of Jesus. Jesus was, they talk about Jesus being a child, all right? So it's this nurturing thing. It's nurturing. It's, it's sustaining life. And when you have an institution that says giving people life ever after, eternal life, well, females kind of gravitate toward that. Living forever, you never die. So that's why they gravitate, mostly, many, I don't know what the figures are, toward what we call Christianity. I mean, it has appeal. Mm -hmm. Of course, the appeal, the ultimate payoff out of all the misery, all the things you have to go through, is that one of these days, you will live forever and not on, when I say live, on the grandest scale that you can possibly have. And they think about, because females think directly and indirectly about nurturing offspring, say that's a wonderful environment. It's called a place called paradise. We might have to die to get there, but I mean, that's just a transition period. Mm -hmm. You die, then you come back to life. On the other side, they call it. And you are in a place called paradise, or heaven, or Jubilee Square, okay? Hallelujah Hall. Everything, everybody happy from now on. No more misery of any kind. So that, that appeals to females here on earth that appeals to them. No more misery. I want to find me a decent man so I, I get out of this misery. All the stories are about that. One of these days, i got to get me somebody that can take me away from what? Misery. Because I don't like being alone, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Females, I mean, they call in on talk shows and all like that. I'm tired. You know, I, I go to work. I make good money. I'm a decent person and whatnot. How come I can't find somebody? See, that that's about doing better. And mm -hmm. doing better means paradise, finding me a place. See, females think about a house more than males do. Mm -hmm. The average male walking the street ain't thinking about buying no house, <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> as a rule. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, he's thinking about them payments and all like that, keeping up the lawn and whatnot. I mean, man, hey, you know, I, ain't nobody but me. I ain't doing all that stuff. <laughs> See what I mean? Yes, sir. But if he pairs off with somebody, the latest are saying, hey, you know, this is a nice place, but we need a, you know, we. I'd like to have a house. Because she's thinking about what? Offspring. Offspring, yeah. All right. That's, that's, I think that's the answer to it. Okay. Why, why is it that the males fill up the jails and the females fill up the churches? That's why. That's why. All righty. The evidence shows that. All righty. Let's go back to the phone lines. Go ahead, caller. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question Go ahead, caller. Hello? Caller, you're on. Yes, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, 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 my first question is, has anyone asked about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan being banned on Facebook? I just wanted to ask first because I missed the first hour. No, that question hasn't come up. Okay, I wanted to ask uh, uh, Mr. Fuller's thoughts on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan being banned on Facebook. And then my second question really quickly is um, the uh, white and non-white titles. Um, I just wanted to ask Mr. Fuller, has he ever considered that back in the day there were things called $5 Indians and there, was, there were white men actually... Uh, uh, pretending like they were Indians, and now that's continued, and now there there might be whites pretending to be different, uh, quote unquote, racists. Thank you. All righty, Mr. Fuller. Now, in answer to the first question about Minister Farrakhan, 
I heard about him being banned from Facebook. So that's what I heard. So that's the answer to that question. Did I hear about him being banned from Facebook? And I heard that he was banned from Facebook. That's all I have to say. Okay, second question. Now, the second question is, because uh, I kind of lost track, what was it, the essence of it? Oh, uh, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, but what was it? Do you remember? Uh, no, because I was concentrating on that first first question uh, that he asked yeah. about, about uh, Minister uh, uh, Farrakhan. So I, I don't want to make a guess. You know, on that. Yeah, you, you, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, that, that's why it's also he's good that a person gmails me. But uh, sorry about yeah, that. I, 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 I kind of I have a way of concentrating, and that's a fault of mine because my memory is very short. When I'm trying to concentrate on one question, okay. I concentrate on that first question. Okay. Uh, and I like for the second question to be asked after the first question. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I get two back to back, I have to recount yeah. what the first question, second question is. Okay. And maybe you can help me out on that okay. in the future because that is discourteous on my part. Okay. I, when I can't keep track like that. Okay. A caller, the last caller. Call back with that second question. We'll take, put you right up front. Uh, Mr. Fuller, uh, this question came up uh, from a caller in Michigan. She said, Mr. Fuller, I've noticed there are a number of terms being used to describe the different types of racism. I just, I'm just curious if the white supremacist has put these terms out there as a deterrent to cause confusion. Do you recommend the victims of racism, white supremacy, to use these different terms of racism or only use the one term race, uh, racism, white supremacy? Please. The one term, in answer to that question, straight to it, the one term, white supremacy, is racism. And racism is white supremacy. And it doesn't deviate not one inch from that under any circumstance, period. That, that's rock-solid code. I mean, otherwise, everything is all up in there. You have mass confusion. You deviate from that. No. There okay. are three classifications of people racially on this planet. White, non-white, and white supremacists. Anything outside of that is suspect. Don't use it according to the code. Don't use any other classifications. And, of course, when you say non-white, you mean black, because brown, red, yellow, beige, tan, they're the shades of black. Now, white supremacists, that's not only a white person, it's always a white person, a person classified as white and who functions as white, but a person that mistreats people directly and indirectly in any area of activity based on color, based on a person being non-white, mistreats a non-white person. That's what a white supremacist is. But you have to be white in order to be a white supremacist. Now, why do I have those three categories of racial categories? Just three, just three. Not the 21 that I last heard about uh, uh, that's supposed to be out here now. It might be even more since then. Uh, but it's white, non-white, and white supremacists. But the white supremacists are the only racists, the only people who belong to a race. So if a white person says, I belong to the white race, it means you are automatically a white supremacist. Hmm, okay. Because race is racism. Okay. Black people are not members of a race. We didn't join any race. I mean, you know, we were told that we were members of a race. Told by whom? By the white supremacists right. themselves. Wow. They told us this stuff. Okay. We ain't racing against nothing. Okay. Mr. Fuller, I think we have the caller back. Uh, uh, go ahead. Caller, you're, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, yeah, that uh, second question. Uh, yes. Well, the first question, just, uh, uh, just quickly, I'm... I may have worded it wrong. I wanted to. I want to be clear. I wanted to ask Mr. Fuller his thoughts on Minister Louis Farrakhan being banned. 
on Facebook and, and other outlets? That That's the first question. I'll, I'll stop there, and then I'll ask the next one. Okay. The, 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 I said, I, I answered that question. I said, I heard that he was banned on Facebook. And my thoughts about it is, I heard that he was banned on Facebook. Now, there's a codified reason for me saying it like that, because that's all I'm supposed to say. All righty. Okay. In other words, now, why am I supposed to say it like that? Because uh, the white supremacists have a way of, when they are doing something that involves another non-white person, and I want everybody to remember this, uh, you always respond. If it's something involving another non-white person, see, they try to trick a black mm -hmm. person into making an evaluation. That's a trick. I don't care what whether you pro or con. You don't go into that at all. Yes, yes. You just saw, like I was asked years ago, said, well, uh, you know, uh, Reverend so-and-so uh, said such and such, and they were talking about a black person. They say, what? Reverend so-and-so said such and such a thing about racism the other day, Fuller. Now, uh, what do you have to say about what he said? And the codified response is always he said what he said. Okay. Now, yeah, well, what do you think about what he said? I think that he said what he said. Now, we should always answer questions. When anybody asks about anything that another non-white person is doing, any non-white person, regardless of what that white person is do, uh, non-white person is doing, and they ask you specifically about a person by name, your response is supposed to always be, if it's something that the person said, you just say, well, he said what he said, or she said what she said. Now, this is in the textbook. Got that. Yeah, right. And if they did something, you just simply say, they, they he did. did. What he did. What he did. Okay. All right. What's your oh, second question, what, sir? Oh, uh, uh, she did what she did. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Second question. All right. The second qu question is, is I was asking, uh, years and years ago, uh, there was something called Five Dollar Indians, and it was whites posing as Indians. They, they would actually pay five dollars to uh, become classified as Indians. Mm -hmm. And the question uh, is, is that... Uh, if that's still going on today, then it's kind of hard to classify people as white and non-white because whites can just pretend that they're non-white. Okay. Okay, $5 Indians, you say? Yes. Okay. Mr. Fuller? They do it all the time, and there was a book that was written by a white man called Black Like Me. Yeah, yeah. All right. He went into a laboratory and got a job done where his skin turned dark. And he went to the South and passed for a black guy. All right? Because he was doing research to write his book, mm -hmm. Black Like Me. Black Like Me. Mm -hmm. To see how bl white people talk when they think there's no black people around. <laughs> wow. All right? And then he wrote a book about it called Black Like Me. I think his name was John Howard Griffin, if I got his name correct. John Howard right. Griffin? I think it okay. was. Okay, all right. I think his last name was Griffin, I think. Okay. It may or may not have been. Okay. But I read that book, and actually he fooled other white people. See, so the white supremacists, they know how to do everything. All right, that's why I say the criteria should always be what? Justice. Justice. See, yeah. we can't get too far into that black thing, who's black and who's not, because the white supremacists know how to classify, you know, anybody as being anything that they want to. Yeah. That, the, the, the white supremacists can get up tomorrow morning and say, hey, I'm Japanese. Yeah, yeah. All right? And ain't nobody <laughs> going to be able to prove that he ain't. Yes. Okay. That, 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 that's why, uh, excuse me, that's why I, I mentioned on the d program entitled today, the obstruction of just us being just J U S T us justice. Okay, Mr. Fuller, this is and we're over, but uh, quickly we have to talk about your your book. So uh, in the remaining moments, a few moments, and then we have another phone call. Uh, just talk about your book, please. Just go to producejustice.com. 
and 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 what will come up on the screen is the method for ordering the book that will cover just about everything that we talked about today and whatnot. Okay. I mean, all, it's all in there okay. and whatnot, and, and it's recommended. The book is designed for the individual person, your problems, wherever you happen to be on the planet, if you're classified as non-white here in 2019. And just uh, the way I recommend that the book be read first is just finger through it. Just, you know, turn any page. I mean, once or twice a day, get in the habit of doing that. And just pick out something, I mean, that, you know, and read it, a paragraph or two, paragraph or two there. But at some point, try to read the entire thing, which that would be kind of laborious. I know that. Yeah. All right. But just pick up the book and turn to any page and say, hmm, that kind of makes sense to me. Or it doesn't make sense to me. And if it does make sense to me, why does it make sense? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, that's oh. the way the book is supposed to be read. Oh, Something right. has got to make sense or it doesn't. Okay. Something is either true or it's false. Or it's something you can use or it's something you can't use. Oh, ready. The book is written for you as an individual. Producejustice.com. Producejustice.com. Okay. That's how you get it. Before we go to the phone lines, I want to thank uh, Dominic for calling back, or rather for writing, texting me back and giving me the... Um, question that the uh, caller that did call back said. Thank you, Dominic. Just wanted to get you in there. Okay, caller, you got about uh, three minutes. Go ahead with your question for Mr. Fuller. Sure. Hello, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Bobby. I have a quick question. I would like to ask, uh, uh, I, want, I have a question about the word jealous or jealousy. And I want to know, is it possible for a, a white supremacist to be jealous of uh, non-white in the system of white supremacy? Yes, oh, yes. I mean, it, it's possible, and, and and I'm quite sure it happens every day, somewhere. And uh, about something, the the black person can probably has a talent that that white person say, I, I've been trying to play the clarinet, and I mean, I just finally gave up. Mm-hmm. But that guy, I mean, it's easy for him. Looks like he just picked it up. I mean, learned it in no time, and he's black. All right, so you know, he's just. That's envy, jealousy, yes, that's kind of prevalent among all people all the time, all right? But it shouldn't exist. Jealousy and envy should not exist in no people at no time. Mm -hmm. End of story. Why? Because it causes people to do things that are non-just, that's why. You're Mm going to harm somebody if you get jealous or envious. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll you, you start saying things, I mean, that may be of some harm to somebody in an unjust manner. That's not supposed to happen. Just remember, we are here to always do the constructive thing, not the non-constructive thing. And envy and jealousy has proven to be non-constructive. Okay. Uh, before I let you go, caller, was was that, uh, or is there any other question that you would have for Mr. Fuller? That's it. Thank oh. you so much, Mr. Fuller. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for uh, uh, your call, and thank you much for the um, for the calls, callers. Uh, in the remaining moments, Mr. Fuller, as we have been uh, discussing um, uh, the obstruction of just us, not justice, but just us, and in particular, the racial population tailoring confusion. Uh, are there any other words uh, that you would like to say? Now, that is found on page 27 and 28 of the revised, expanded edition of the um, United Compensatory Code System concept. But any other words you would like to leave us as we close this particular program on May the 8th? Well, uh, not directly related to the subject you just mentioned, but I'd just like to say, I violated the code uh, several times, I think, in the last uh, two or three presentations. Uh, and I would like to point that out, because I'm not exempt either. Uh, and what? The, how did I do it? I got preachy, and I, I don't know how long I've been doing this, but I really caught myself doing it last week, a week before last. You start preaching, huh? Yes, that's, you know, in other words, the code is not supposed to be preached. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not even supposed to be taught. It's just supposed to be conversational. We have a conversation, 
Neely Fuller is not an expert on racism. It's no expert on racism except the racists themselves. So I'm just a fellow prisoner. But people All think right? you are an expert. Yes, and that is, that is a huge mistake. The only experts on racism are the white supremacists of this planet. They are the experts because they are the ones who are doing it, and everybody else who is non-white doesn't know nowhere near enough okay. about racism. That's a good spot to leave it there. Right. Talk to him at Radio.com, the world's greatest radio and radio the way it should be heard. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Bye. <laughs>